So this is the FLSUN T1 Pro 3D printer. And from the moment you turn it on, you can tell this thing is a higher quality, better designed product than most of the 3D printers that have dominated the market for the last two years. And it's only after spending several days diving deep with this Delta printer that I realized that this thing is next generation in a way that leverages everything that came before it. 3D printing with the T1 Pro is just totally different. It's better. But to understand why, there are five key things that you need to know. And we'll start with the design here. The, the T1 Pro uses a Delta architecture, which rather than uh, moving a bed around like you would have on an i3 style printer or moving a head around on long, on long belts like a Core XY printer, here you have three rigid arms in a triangular box and those arms are attached to the effector or the extruder uh, they come together to, to move the extruder and on the other end they're attached to linear rails. And with those linear rails you can move the head, the, the effector, in any direction you want as well as up if you're moving all three arms at the same time. So really cool design but what it, the real advantage is the effector is very light so you're not moving a lot of mass which means you can go like lightning with this printer and we'll talk about that. Uh, spec wise, uh, the workspace here is round rather than rectangular, so you have a diameter of 260 millimeters and a height of 285. The hot end's pretty impressive, it can get to 300 degrees Celsius, and the bed temperature can go to 110. Now, the big advantage they, they added to the T1 Pro versus the T1 is that the T1 Pro is quite a bit quieter. Delta printers are, are notorious for being loud. But this printer runs at 55 uh, decibels, which is basically, you know, listen outside in your neighborhood kind of kind of sound levels. And that's at three feet. If you go further than that, and I've done this in my shop, I've run the printer and I've gone to the other side of my shop and I can barely hear it. So I can actually record video in my shop while I'm 3D printing something, which I thought was kind of nice. This is obviously in a closed cabinet. The, the two back sides of the printer are acrylic and the front is a glass door. And feature-wise, the, the printer does auto-leveling, run-out detection, all the things you're, you're used to with, uh, with a 3D printer. This one also has a camera built into the cabinet. It runs clippers, so you can use that camera to either record video, time-lapse video, or you can just use it to monitor your printer if you're busy doing something else. So all in all, really nice packaging here. So performance in a 3D printer is also very important. And if you look at the current market leaders, the Bamboo Labs type printers, those all top out around 600 millimeters a second. Here by comparison, the, the T1 Pro, it tops out at a mind boggling 1000 millimeters a second. And the good news is it's not just marketing. You can actually do this. To prove all of this on their thumb drive, FL Sun includes a 10 minute Benchy. Now I know they tend to be baked, but you can print this and it will print literally in, I think nine minutes and 58 seconds. And it looks remarkable. It doesn't look like it was rushed. There's no missed layers. There's no ripples. There's no ringing of any sort. So all in all, I think, I think the speed is not only as advertised, but it doesn't impact the print quality in any real way that I can determine. The hot end I mentioned gets up to 300 degrees Celsius. It heats up pretty quickly. That's an important thing. My real complaint is the bed heating. The bed will, will get up to 110, but if you're going to that temperature, expect four or five minutes of wait time to, to get it to that temperature. This is one place where I wish the printer was a little faster. Hot end cooling is exceptional. There's no heat dissipation past the heat break, so you're not gonna get jamming of partially melted filament in the in the effector, in the, in the extruder. So you won't have to worry about that. It also means that filament changes are very easy to do. Uh, Part cooling is also better than average, I'd say. Uh, what that really means is you can do better than average overhangs without supports. Uh, none of us like supports, but sometimes they're necessary. Here on this printer, on, on the T1 Pro, you'll generally get away without supports a little more uh, than you would on most other printers. So filament handling is done really well on the T1 Pro. In fact, I would say it's the most drama-free filament management I've used on any 3D printer. Uh, never a jam, never a clog. It just worked every time. Now, if you're changing filament, 
the filament sits up in the top of the printer on a sliding bar and that you put through the hole in the spool and then you can just pull the filament down and stick it into the top of the extruder and go to the on-screen display say you're inserting filament it heats it up to a, a selected temperature and the rest of it's pretty much hands-off same with removal uh, it, it removed clean every time once once the filament was heated up now all of this and the 300 degree temperature on the on the heater inside the extruder means that you can do a wide array of filaments i have tried most of the ones on this list i have on screen certainly pla works remarkably well it also supports pla plus and pla hp high performance pla uh, pet g tpu and i'll show you examples of all of these things uh, i also did abs because that one is fairly notorious to print uh, because the heat inside the cab cavity of the printer has to be pretty consistent otherwise it'll split no problem with it here and the downside of all of this is there's no multicolor option so hopefully uh, fl sun is working on something so the software aspects of the t1 pro are pretty well implemented i'd say you get a couple of ways to to control the printer there's a front panel with a with a touch screen on it and from there you can control temperatures and loading and, and unloading filaments starting and stopping jobs but the entire printer is built on top of clipper so that means you also get the ability to use a web browser to connect and that's really handy if you're doing some kind of remote operation maybe you have a print farm and this this printer is sitting in, in your print farm but in addition to that if you're busy doing something else and you just want to periodically check how your printer is doing you can uh, you can monitor from the camera that's built into the printer and uh, and watch the jobs going now as far as slicers go fl sun has a branded version of orca slicer and it works just like orca slicer so if you've used that you could certainly use this but if you want to use the original full-blown orca slicer or cura or prusa's slicer you can do any of those there's no lock in here which is leads to the last point which is if you see if you see what's going on right now with bamboo labs and how they're locking in users that isn't happening here at least uh, not yet and hopefully not for the future uh, you, you're free to run any slicer you want and fl sun doesn't really get in your way so print quality is one of the places where i think fl sun has done an immense amount of work to try and make this printer perfect and they actually do talk about perfect first layers every time and this is one of the things that i think is a godsend i've had so much trouble in the past dealing with first layers or you get halfway through a print and the, and the part pops off because the first layer didn't stick properly here uh, you run the input shaping and the bed leveling and after that uh, i've been pounding this thing with with prints I've run through almost two and a half rolls of filament and not a single bad layer, not, not a part popped off. So I think they've done a great job. Parts themselves, when, when they come off the printer, they're clean, they're uniform. There's no missed layers, there's no blobs, and there's no seams. Even if you are lining the seams up on the part, you're going to have to go very closely through every corner of your part to find out where the seam actually is. I typically use random and I don't see any place in the part where where the, the layer started and stopped. So I think they've done a great job there. Accuracy is also very good if you're if you're measuring uh, with a calibration cube or something. You're going to see that it's going to be within probably less than a tenth of a millimeter, which I think is great. Uh, but also if you're doing in-place parts where it, where you're printing a single piece but it's got multiple moving parts like this bearing I did. Uh, those things come off the printer and they just work you don't have to break them loose because there was over overflow in the in the uh, in the filament coming out of the nozzle so I think they've done a great job here and the proof is in the output and let's take a look at some of the things I printed over the last couple days and I'll start with this 10 minute benchy and you can see the output here looks pretty nice there's no ripples or anything to indicate that this was done quickly I also grabbed a, a fat cat off of their USB thumb drive and it came out nicely. Of course, we're going to do calibration cubes to make sure everything's uh, set properly and then I did an overhang test. Uh, the important thing here is the bridging. Look how awesome that bridging is. 
A couple of bearings. The white one is PLA, the black one's ABS. I showed you the black one already. And if you want to make yourself a squishy phone case, uh, this is TPU and it printed really nicely on this printer. I also made a, a bunch of these. These are clamps that I use in my studio for holding camera equipment and things. And uh, the knobs are, are TPU, so uh, so everything here except the, the bolts were made uh, with this printer and uh, came out came out awesome. And finally, the the pinnacle here is the Singing Dragon, and this was done in gold PLA. And look how incredible that is. It's just flawless. Okay, so now that a printer like the T1 Pro exists, I can say I'm most likely going to retire my Core XY printer, the Creality K1 Pro. I can also say with absolute certainty that I am never, ever, ever going to build my own 3D printer ever again because it's just not worth it. It's clear to me that FL Sun has done just immense amounts of measuring and tweaking on this printer to make sure that it's absolutely perfect that it's blistering fast and produces fantastic output and couple that with the fact that they've built their own slicer and integrated it here into the experience without locking you out of your own favorite slicer or just locking you out of your printer in general like some companies are doing and then consider they do all of this for less than six hundred dollars that pretty much makes this printer, the, the T1 Pro, the best of the best.